I love this song. It's a song. It's loud. It blesses me every time I sing this song. It's about a myriad of sinners out there in the world and the one and only Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So I pray that it blesses you as well. And it goes like this. Every day that passed me by, I can see it in their eyes. Lonely people filled with care, and who knows where? Only go through private pain. Living fear to fear, laughter hides their solid cries. Only Jesus hears. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. Confident 
that God's judgment would never come. Likewise, prosperity and comfort lifestyle can cause us to drift into a worthy lifestyle where a deep and abiding hunger for God no longer exists if we're not careful. And I want to read also from the book of Acts, and we find that where Paul was speaking to Felix in the 24th chapter, the 25th verse, or the 20, yeah, the 25th verse. And as he reasoned righteousness, temperament, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered and said, Go thou away for this time. When I, have a when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. As Paul speaks before Felix concerning faith in Jesus Christ, preaching about righteousness, temper, temperance, and the judgment to come, Felix becomes frightened. But don't you know what he said? A little bit later he said, When I have a convenient time, I will send for you. So I want to talk about that a little bit today. Convenience store Christianity. A phenomenon of our day is the convenience store. It is handy, easily acceptable, accessible place to shop. And like a phenomenon in our day is easy believism. It's too hard, it is too handy and easily accessible. It is a convenience store type Christianity. When I need something real quick, I run down to the 7-Eleven and I can pick it up and bring it back home. And it, it takes care of it for just a little bit of time. But if I want a lot of food in the house, I go to Lynn Dixie Publix or I go to the, 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 the market to shop and you shop for an hour or so, or if you're with my wife, maybe two hours you shop. And then, and then you get everything that you need. Man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know, yeah. Have you ever noticed going into the store with your wife? When I go to the store to buy something, I go to buy one thing. Uh -huh. I go to that, I get it, and I'm done. Boring. <laughs> so you already understand that's not my life. <laughs> and, and I think most women are that way. I, I want to sometimes. We're going, wait, let's go to Walmart. I need to get one thing. I said, okay, we go to Walmart and get one thing. We get that one thing, and all of a sudden, she got to look at this. And she stopped and look at this and look at that. But when you're shopping for, for groceries and stuff like that, you spend time to get the right stuff. And I appreciate what she does. It gets the bargain. But when you go to a convenience store, it's just to fill a void. To fill in something that is not that you don't have right now. And I'm thinking sometimes in our Christianity and our walk, our walk with God, not just here, but I'm talking about everywhere all around, is there's a lot of convenience store Christians. They go for a quick fix to get by for the day, but when tomorrow comes, the quick fix is gone, and they don't know what to do. So let's talk about that a little bit today. So let's talk about a convenient salvation. Now, everybody I talk to today is saved. Everybody I know, pretty much you ask them about, yeah, I got Jesus in my life. But their lifestyle doesn't quite measure up to the Word of God. So I put some questions in my mind, but I'm not their judge. God is their judge. But if a door of opportunity will open, I will share this gospel with them. I don't think we need to force feed them or force, force it down anybody's throat, but I think we need to share the word with love. Amen? Amen. And as long as we're sharing it with love, God will help us. But a convenience store type Christianity, they have no remorse. What do I mean by no remorse? They have no painful regret. They don't regret about some of the things that they do. Oh, they got it up there. Okay. Or anguish caused by a feeling of guilt. Have you ever done something that you knew that was wrong and you felt guilty about it? Yeah. But you didn't change it? How many of you ever done? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but sometimes, no remorse. In other words, okay, so what? I did it. I messed up. I'm just going to move on. I, don't, I am not going to worry about it. And they say, you know, you're doing the same thing over and over again. There's no repentance for that. In other words, there's no asking God to forgive me of the things that I did wrong. When I do something wrong or I even get upset a little bit, I have to go to the Lord and pray, God, please remove that out of me. Because God, that's not who I want to be. Who I want to be is I want to be a child of God. When people see me, I want them to see Jesus. The other day, I was out at the bank and I was walking in and seeing a guy that I'd known for quite a while, we were, we were talking, and, 
And, and we had, and we just sit there talking for a while. He's going to ask you something. I said, well, yeah. And I've known this guy for about 10 years. He said, you're a Christian, aren't you? I said, well, yes. And he said, are you a minister? I said, well, yes. He said, you never told me. I said, well, you never asked me. <laughs> I said, but what makes you ask me today? He said, because there's always been something different about you than everybody else that I know. He said, you always seem to be happy and have peace in your life and content. He said, I even hear you every now and then say, well, thank you, Jesus, when I was around you. He said, what? All right, if you're a minister, what, what, what church do you go to? And I, and I began to share with him, well, I pastor the church. He said, I knew it. I knew there was a whole lot, something different about you than the others, the people that I know. What made it different? He seen Jesus in me. Amen? He might not see Jesus himself, but he sees the love of God in me. That's what I want people to see in me. Amen. But when you get a lot of stuff from Christianity, you get people that have no remorse. They don't repent. They kind of feel like everything is all right in life. Remember not long ago I talked about moral compass and what moral compass meant? It just simply means that you have a hard time to distinguish what is right and what is wrong. That everything needs to be right, but it's not. You know, and, 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 and everything we don't judge. Some things just judge itself. We don't judge anyway. God doesn't judge it. But there's some things you just look at and you just know ain't right. So there's no repentance. There's no, there's no remorse. Then there's no reform. And what does that word reform mean? It means to reshape or to reorganize. So if, if, if I have no remorse, I have no painful regrets or anguish or any cause to feel guilt, if I don't repent to ask for forgiveness, and then I have no reform, in other words, to reshape or reorganize, then something is already missing in my life. Uh, there's men here and women here that run businesses. And if you, your business is not going the way it should be going, you have to reshape it. You have to reorganize it. You have to adjust it to make it so it will work. If not, you'll probably lose your business. So the same thing with God is that in my life with God is that when something ain't right in my life, I need to straighten it out. I need to reorganize my life more like His life. Amen? Amen. So I like that. But there's a lot of prosperity preachers today. And nothing wrong with prosperity. There's a lot of people that, that say, hey, don't worry about it. Everything is up good. Nothing wrong about being positive. And I like that positive attitude because I think the more positive we, we, we think of things and the, the more positive we become, greater things happen for us. But along with all that, we have to have a relationship. If that relationship is not there, well, that positive Focus is not going to last that long. Amen. It might last for a little, but it's not going to last long. Then you have a convenient security, is what I want to call that. No power. And what I mean by no power? Well, a few weeks ago we had that storm that come through, and our kids were, was without power for about 60 some hours or something like that. And it just devastated their household. How many of you have been without power? You know, I, I remember back in the day, no power, didn't, we, we really didn't care, you know, but, but today we care. But no power. And they just couldn't function. They had to empty the freezers, they had to do this, they had to do that. It was hot, so your house gets mildewy and all that, but with no power. And it's raining, so you can't open the windows and leave them open to your house and get drenched. But when that power came back on, they were excited. They got in there, they cleaned the house, they wiped everything down, got everything fixed back where it was supposed to, come back to our house, got their food out of the freezer, took it back home, and all of a sudden, the house became normal again. Listen, when you got no power in your own life, you have no ability to get anything accomplished in your life. But look, when the power of God comes in your life, everything changes, amen? Everything changes. It gets so much better. Why? Because that power, the power of God, works in our lives. Amen. See, when I face an obstacle, when I face it, if I had no power, I couldn't overcome it because I operate in my realm of thinking. But when I have the power of God and I operate the work, God wants me to be. Yes. Then you have, see, if you've got no power, you've got no purity. And, and what does that word purity mean? It means freedom from evil or sin. Wow. Now think about that. 
See, if I have power, I'm able to overcome. But if I don't have no power, I can't put sin aside. Now, if this hits anybody today, don't get mad at me. Just love me. Everybody say you're going to love me? Oh, yeah. I love Mike, too. I'll tell you. If your life is always in turmoil, one drama after another after another, you need to check who your power source is. Amen. That's pretty strong, but it's great. Amen? You need to take a look. Where's your power coming from? Because if, if, if I live like, if, if I got up here, I heard one pastor one time, every time he got behind the pulpit, he complained about something. And I used to sit back and think, why is he complaining? He should be uplifting people. And then I got thinking one day, that man got no power in his life. He's just living and going through the formality. Listen, I'm not going to just live and go through the formality. As a child of God, I'm going to have the power to overcome evil when it comes against me. Amen? Amen. you got to have power. <laughs> just going into church on a Sunday morning, getting a quick fix and leaving, no power. That's right. When you come to church, you get that relationship with God. Amen? Amen. And when you got that relationship with God, then you got power. Amen. Wow, because that relationship makes the difference. We got a couple men in here that's pretty powerful men. And I looked at them, I had to come up and grab my arm, and I was, I was thanking God they let go of it. <laughs> messing with them, I ain't messing with them no more. They're too strong. They're powerful. We probably got some women here powerful too. And I'm not going to leave the women, I'm going to be. But let me tell you, I'm going to be. I don't know how that goes anymore. I'm going to be correct. <laughs> But listen, I'd rather have a house full of people that's powerful for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's dug in. Understand what it means. And how many knows that the devil will hit you every time he can? Oh, yeah. right. And if we don't have the power, we have no purity. Or no power, then we have no purity. And then the problems we have, and I use a word here called chastening, which means to correct or discipline or correcting his discipline, that I can't correct myself. Or when somebody comes to me and say, listen, brother, I see that you're going through something. Can I pray for you? If you don't have the power of the purity, you're not going to let them help you get back on the right track. And sometimes we need someone talking to us, helping us and showing us where we might be off track a little bit. As long as it's done in love. Amen? Amen. Everybody say, in love. In love. In, uh, I'll put there and then move on. <laughs> then you have a convenient support. You got a convenient store support. When I go to a convenience store, I know I can find bread, I can find milk, I can find candy bars, which I'm, which I'm not allowed to have. <laughs> Do you know how many days it's been since I've had a payday? My favorite candy there is. I just. <sighs> <Yes>. <sighs>
What used to bother me the most was get around somebody that had biblical knowledge. Yes. Oh, yeah. And some biblical understanding of some scripture. And then want to tell me why they can't serve God. Because sometimes people, once again, is looking for a quick fix. Right. Just to get them through the moment. To get them through that time frame so they can get on and do what they want to do the next day. Have you ever noticed when somebody is really going through something? Uh -huh. They're in that altar. But when they're not going through anything, they're not at the altar. Yes. And then you always got to come down to the altar. You can have an altar right where you're at. But you know what? I want to praise God in the good times. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm going to praise Him in the bad times. And I'm going to still praise him when I go home and i got to deal with the ice cream issue. Uh -huh. I'm still going to praise him. Thank you, Steve. I love you. Uh -huh. yeah, Frank it. Frank it. Yeah, he's still upset about Buckeye Bob. That's why. That's one of the reasons why. But anyway, I've never seen a guy in my life. We were sitting there waiting on the food to come. And Frankie could smell it. He said, where's the food? He was looking for that food. And he said, five minutes. Frankie got up. I think he went back there to help him set up. <laughs> and he comes back and he said, and that guy can eat. He never gave away. Oh. We had a great time. I did the best with him. He told on me, I got to do that to him. But anyway, let's get back to that. They quote scripture. They talk of the Savior. They talk about God, but they practice sin. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, that when people are like that, and you're talking to them, I've had it happen to me a lot of times. They're high on something. Yeah, there you go. And they, they want to tell me all about God, but they don't want to live. They're under conviction. But they want a quick fix, and they go back to where they're at. My problem with that is this. If we don't fix it now and get it right with God now, when will we have that opportunity to? Every morning you turn your TV on. Somebody's been murdered. Or somebody's headed to work. A fatal accident. We might not have that opportunity. And I know people have got to deal with God in the wrong way. And I understand that God's a great God and He loves us. Amen. But He wants us to serve Him and to trust Him. You see, if none of us are promised that we're going to make it home this afternoon, that's right. That's right. we're not promised that. But if I have to leave this earth today, I want to know without a doubt that I'm in the presence of God. How about you? Amen. 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 And after I leave church, during the middle of the week or during Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, whatever, something happens to me. I want to know that even though it's not Sunday, that if something happens to me, I'm going to be in the presence of God. How about you? Amen. That's what's important. And I worry about quick fixes. I worry about people just going through emotions sometimes. And I pray for people. And I'm not trying to be mean, please. I just want us to realize we got to, we got to serve God every day of our lives. Amen? That's right. He's the most important person in my life. Listen, I can remember the days of being in sin. I can remember the days when I thought I was cool. I remember the day I didn't want to hear anything about Jesus. I can remember those days. And I remember, and I, but I remember the night that Jesus Christ came into my life. And I thought I was smart and I thought I had it all together and I found that I had nothing. But when Jesus came into my life, He changed my life. Wow. I mean, it's been a beautiful ride with my Lord and Savior. How about a convenient strength? The arm of the flesh. I'm strong. I'm powerful. Nothing can hit me. And some, some people that get to see the great fix on Sunday morning, they feel, they feel so strong. But all of a sudden, when they leave, they find out how weak they are. If you got some Christians that has a tongue of a serpent, 
I'm going to leave that one there and I ain't messing with it. <laughs> the smallest member of the body is the most dangerous member yes. of the body. Yes. And then they have the heart of a sinner instead of the heart of a child of God. But they got their fixed. Quite a few years back, I have went through a, a time at our church here, and we were here. And every Sunday, we were pretty full. Mm -hmm. And we were at Pentecostal, way out there. I don't know if I have to say way out there, because there was realness. But I kept watching folks come in and shout and jump and dance and walk outside and I was ready to fight somebody. And we've seen that happening Sunday after Sunday. And most times it's family against family that happened. I don't know what was going on. I didn't really want to know. I remember one Sunday morning in this building. It was pretty full. The power of God was moving. I seen two men walk in our doors. I thought I told you this, but I'll tell you again. And they sit back there about where Jim and Linda's at. During the service, I could see the tears in their eyes, and I'm saying, I already knew in my mind that they were going to hit this altar and they were going to accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. We didn't see him come in, nobody seen him come in. But they were crying. They were weeping. When I began to give the altar call, a gentleman stood up, everybody was standing up, and he began to dance in the spirit, but he knocked people down. He come out of this hallway. And I'm not against Pentecostal, please, because I'm a Pentecostal, believe me. But there's a order in God's house. Amen? Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand, clap of praise for God's word. He came down this hallway dancing, and I'm sitting here, Lord, I need help. And I looked up and these two men were wiping the tears out of their face. Nobody seen them leave. Nobody seen them come in. Nobody seen them leave. And someone come out and help me. What bothered me, nobody was concerned about the two men. They thought we stopped what the Holy Spirit was trying to do. Because he was here for the fix. And they wanted to fix. And they were seeking to fix. And as y'all know, I told the story that the next week I wrestled with this and went through it. And I called people to be real. Over 50 people exited us. And I think at another time, another, probably another 50 exited us about that time. And I spoke to the Lord and I was, I was, I was dead. I, I was, didn't know what to do. What's happening? And I remember the Lord waking me up about 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock, and I turned the TV on. And Crackle Dollar was speaking. And he was going through the exact same thing that I was dealing with. And he said, he cried out to the Lord, he cried out to the Lord, he cried out to the Lord, and he said, just couldn't get no answer. He said, people was leaving me. I called him to be real. And he said, the Lord spoke to him. Don't you catch this, because it's important. He said, there are people in the house of God that's full of the Holy Spirit. In other words, have a total relationship with God, like a lot of us in here has today. He said, the people that, and I will just use it my term, but it has that convention, not convention, <laughs> convenience store Christianity, they're looking for an ultimate fix. So they come in and they sit beside someone that is full of the Spirit. And that Spirit manifests itself. You see, God's Spirit is going to touch other people if you're close around. Amen? Amen. And they get excited. And they feel that love. And they feel that goodness. And they feel that peace. But just as soon as they leave, they have nothing. So they run from one church to another church to another church to find it. But let me tell you something, folks. We can run from church to church to church to church to find it. You're not going to find it until you bring him into your life 
and allow God to take residence in your life and you have that relationship with Him in here and let Him guide your life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? That's the way you're going to find it. And when you walk out the door, you're not going to fight somebody. You're going to put your arms around them and love on them. Amen? Amen. And I see that here today. And I love that. And the Lord spoke to me very clearly. And he said, it's time for us to become real. He said, I'm wrapping this thing up. And I believe that God is wrapping this up. Amen. Lord, if you come today, I'm ready. Are you ready? But suppose he comes on Friday. Are you ready? Amen. How about on Monday? Yes. Tuesday? Yes. Wednesday or Thursday? I hope every day of our life that we're ready. We just don't need a quick fix. We need a fix. Amen? Yeah. Can I pick on you a minute? Yeah. But Kenny, he, he was the honoriest kid that ever lived. He really was. Honor, sneaky, canine. I can, if you said I could pick. No, I ain't doing it. Sure. Did he, he get it from me? She said, You got it from me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Must be the ice cream. It's all I can say. <laughs> but anyway, Kenny got messed up big time with drugs. Big time. Marijuana, heroin, acid, all that stuff. And he was just getting one fix after another, another. But one day something changed in his life. He said, I don't need this anymore. Fortunately, what, about 19? He put himself in rehab. He got into the martial arts. He began to create some discipline in his life. As his life has continued, he got to really meet Jesus. You know what he said? I'm tired of the quick fix. I'm tired of the quick high. I'm tired of this and I'm tired of that. I want something that's real. And I think the body of Christ today, worldwide, needs something real today. Amen? I don't think we need to get away from that. You're okay. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Feel good. Do it. Think. No. We need to realize that sin is sin. Remember last week I talked about getting back to the basis, getting back to the foundation? Yes, amen. So we, we've got to get to the point that where realness can come in. So let me finish this here real quick. A convenient type service. No perseverance, which means to continue effort in spite of difficulty and steadfastness. In other words, we find Christians ain't willing to fight the battle. Sometimes they're not willing to, no matter how difficult it is, I'm not going to let it beat me. I'm not going to let it overcome me. I'm going I'm, I'm to be the best that I can be. No production. In other words, that means not producing. And no fruit of the Spirit. Maybe a touch of it. But really not the fruit of the Spirit the way God intended it for it to be. Love, peace, joy, long-suffering, so forth. But we find the negatives instead of the positives. So I guess my question today is simply this. Do we know that we know if Jesus would come today that you're taking a ride. Amen? Amen? I'm taking a ride. I know that. You know how I know that? Because true salvation consists of this. Three things. The conviction of the Spirit, which is repentance. I repent every day of my life, folks. Amen. I don't know. And I even ask God sometimes, but I don't think I've done anything wrong. I said, Lord, if I said something that could be offensive this day, please forgive me. Amen? Amen. I'm not perfect. I understand that. But the conviction of the spirit of repentance, the calling of the Savior, the Word of God, get the Word of God and study the Word Amen. and understand the Word to the best of your ability. Yes. Which is amazing. And then the coming of Christ of the sinners. In other words, 
sinners and people need to realize that Christ is coming back. That is my belief. Amen? Yes. He died on the cross and he rose from the grave. Amen? And that same resurrection power that took him out of here and took him to heaven is the same resurrection power that's going to come back and take us off this earth one day. So, the same, the same power. Woo. So, I guess what I'm saying is, I don't need it quick. I need it to be long lasting. Just like when Sheila and I got married, we said, for life. For life. And that's what we intended, and that's what we're going to do. For life. Why? Because it's important that I spend the rest of my life with this young lady over here. And that she with me. We don't know how we're going to leave this world. But we're thinking about we're going to rise to the sky together. Amen? Amen. God is good. All the time. My question is, do we know that we know that Jesus Christ lives in here? Amen. That's it. Simple. If we know that, without a doubt, we repent for the things that we do wrong in our lives. Because we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to say something off. Something that shouldn't have went that, went that way. But we repent for those things and ask Christ in trouble. Could we stand together? Y'all would come.
for convenience? Do we reflect that in who we are? As the ushers are coming up, as we're leaving here, you know, Jesus told his disciples how difficult it's going to be for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And it's because the rich man doesn't need anything. We don't need a whole lot here. How many of you ate this morning? Yeah. How many of you woke up dry? You know, church has become a convenience. Our relationship with God has become a convenience. Life has become busy. And I believe that's one of the greatest pearls that Satan has put in play during his game, is that we get so busy that we have to almost make our relationship with God when it's convenient. We too focus on living the life that the world sets and not necessarily thankful of a life that's been given to us. You know, that excitement that comes whenever we wake up in the morning and we see the face of the person we love and cherish the most right beside us, can't even begin to measure to the fulfillment and the joy when we wake up knowing the presence of God is in us.